Ulla and Rinaka for coming tonight. Um, it is very good to see you all here. And um, what we have planned to do is really look at a very few examples of what you could do with portfolios. This is not an exhaustive list because there are many, many more. So you'll have links that you can explore later on on your own and take a look at some examples and kind of also look at how the portfolio could be introduced into your institution and some of the important um, aspects of getting it into an organization that you might want to keep in mind if you're new to it, which the majority of you are, um, to get you started with it. Just to start out, um, I started my Mahara journey and my e-portfolio journey actually a number of years ago at the University of Luxembourg, where I had worked um, in a Bachelor in Educational Science program. And there we asked students to create their portfolios and were in search of a new system. That's when we came across Mahara and we liked it quite a bit because it was open source and it still is open source. Um, so we could contribute to the software, we could make changes to it, uh, we could contribute features to it, and it was easy to use uh, because we had primary teachers to educate and they were not always very fond of technology, even though the study program itself was very technology rich and used a lot of digital tools. So that it was important to have a system that is easy to use for the students, where they did not need to know how to program, how to write HTML code and the like, but could simply focus on putting the content into their portfolios. And so in, back in 2008, we started using Mahara at the university with the um, education students. And then in 2010, I decided to um, move somewhere else. And so I applied for a job at Catalyst, which is the maintainer of uh, Mahara, and moved to New Zealand. So just a little over seven years ago. And since then, I've been working with the Mahara core team, because as maintainers, we do the majority of the work on Mahara. And um, we have a team of developers, of designers, uh, front-end developers, and also testers help with making sure that, as, that the software functions as it does. We also help in the community and answer questions there, listen to pe what people like to use Mahara for, what they would like to use it in the future, what their plans are, what their grievances are, so that we can always evolve the software. And therefore, are really active with them, write the user manual, answer questions, and really try also to bring everybody together, because we can always learn from each other. And so it's really nice today to see three universities that are located in Suva here in the room, um, because you can share your ideas of using portfolios, of um, having the experience from USP, kind of tapping into their, um, into what they have already done, into their ideas and see examples from them and then see how you could apply that in your own programs. So why would you actually use a portfolio? There are lots and lots of different reasons. And please do feel free to ask questions in between if you have them. So don't have to wait until the end of the session. So I'm just going to show you very few examples, as I mentioned earlier. And um, you will have access to the presentation later on so that you can explore them further. Um, because all the links that are shown there, they are clickable so you can go in there and look directly at the portfolios because the projector screen is a bit on the small side. So you might not really be able to read everything that is there. So it is really just to give you an overview. Um, why use portfolios? If we are looking at it from the academic side, we have the academic learning there. And that is a big part of student life. But that is not all that students do. Students also have jobs, they have internships, um, they might have studied abroad, they learn informally in the community, 
or in other areas, um, they do volunteering. And what we are oftentimes not really good at in the academic context is acknowledging this area that is outside of academia. But of course, the students earn a lot of experiences through their internships, through their work, volunteering, their family life, and so on. Um, they, it does influence their academic life. And so what we can do with a portfolio is really bring those two worlds together in order to transfer skills that we earn in the informal context or in the workplace more into academia. And then, of course, also from academia, we learn a lot of things and bring that into the other world. And that is where the portfolio can be nicely situated because it can bring those two worlds together, can make the connection between them and make those connections visible so that um, students can have their space within the e-portfolio. And you as academics can also see what they do outside of your classroom. Um, because if we have mature students, for example, they bring a lot of experience with it. And if we can tap into that more easily, then we, of course, gain more in the academic world from it. And that's why the portfolio can be nicely situated in the middle and um, make those uh, two worlds work together. So how do you actually, or what do you do with a portfolio? Well, in Mahara, we actually have three concepts. We have the creation of a portfolio, the sharing of a portfolio, and then also the collaboration. And so let's get started with the creation because that is usually the first step for people because first they need to have a portfolio. And what you do in a portfolio is oftentimes having two components in it, namely the evidence itself of what you have done. So for example, if you um, read a novel, as in this case, you put in what the novel was about or write a short summary. And the second aspect is the reflection, because otherwise it is just a, um, a collection of evidence. But a portfolio is really enriched through the reflection of what you think about the evidence. And so in this case, we have a high school project about English where the students needed to read a novel and then reflect on it and set up a project website in order to talk about the novel and bring in their own thoughts. And the second example here is uh, from the University of University of the Arts London. And oftentimes we know that design students and art students in general need to keep a portfolio because they need to show um, how they are painting, what their artwork is like in order to be exhibited or in order to get a job. And in this case, it is more on the academic world that we have the portfolios. But again, we are having the evidence in there and then also the reflection and thoughts around that evidence so that students can really showcase what they have learned. And we can see also what they have learned and what they think about what they have learned. Because if we are just going with a learning management system and give them a grade, um, a, grade might, a grade of A might mean something different at one university than it does at a different university. And so you can only really judge the competency of a person if you look at the underlying evidence and therefore can make up your own mind and how well you think the student is doing no matter what their academic grade is. And that is where the portfolio comes in because that is where we showcase the evidence, that is where we place it and also where we can reflect on it. So taking the example of medicine, um, portfolios are being created a lot for nursing because we have registered nurses and so they need to, in New Zealand at least, um, they need to go through re-registration every few years. And so they need to demonstrate their skills that they can still place an IV properly, that their bedside manners are still what is expected these days. And so the nurses can't just say, yes, I've done that, but they need to show what they have done and how they have done it so that their assessor can really look at that evidence and make up their own mind and say, yes, you've passed the standard. 
This is, um, yes, please. So this evidence you are describing there mm -hmm. is a log of the experience the student has. Is, would that be the same thing? It can be a log of the experience or it can be a summary of experiences. Um, so depending on what your portfolio is about, um, you can really show the progression. So you can show this is what I knew in the first week of being in the study program. This is what I knew in the second week, in the third week, in the fourth week. And then at the end, you can also write a reflection across all the weeks. Or you can create a showcase portfolio, for example, where you only show off your best things. So that would typically then be at the end of an academic term, uh, or when you apply for a job, or when you have, um, yeah, let's stick with when you apply for a job that you only show off your best side. That you have evidence in there, for example, on how well you work with others to showcase your teamwork, on how well you complete certain tasks in your area, um, be that in medicine, for example, of what you have learned over time, but really only show the best things there. So there are many different types of portfolios that you can work with um, so that you have a, pro a progress portfolio, a showcase portfolio, also an assessment portfolio, where you essentially do get a grade and get feedback on how well you have been doing. And these days we see a lot of competency portfolios for assessment as well, um, so that students are judged on certain standards and they need to provide evidence for those standards. And once they've completed them, then the assessor gives them feedback and in the end might also give them a grade or says, yes, they've completed all the standards and therefore um, are ready for registration. This, is, is, this example here is in German, but that is not the point, even though I'm German. Um, that's not why I put it in there, but I wanted to uh, just to briefly show you that portfolios don't always have to be in English. So we can have portfolios in other languages. So you can also write in Fijian, you can write in Japanese, in French, in Spanish, in um, Chinese. The platform supports all that. It is really up to you in which language you want to write and how you want to present your evidence. And in this case, it is a nice example for just showing how short a portfolio can be and also that you can embed multimedia content. So because on the left-hand um, side, if you go to it, you'll see a video. Then on the right-hand side, that is actually an animated GIF. So you see how happy the students are um, playing with the robots there. And then all the text about the project is hidden underneath the headings. So when you click the headings, the text actually expands. So you can have also a nice short website and draw the attention of your readers, of your portfolio to the, to the different sections that you want them to see, and then have all the other sections hidden so that they can then click on them when they're interested in reading more. So you have a lot of design options for creating your portfolio online. And the advantage of creating a portfolio online compared to a paper-based portfolio is that you can access it anywhere. This portfolio sits in Switzerland, but with an internet connection, I have easy access to it. And so an assessor could be halfway around the world and still look at that portfolio. There are no postage costs, no shipping necessary. Students don't need to photocopy their portfolios multiple times if they need to give it to um, others. And they can get feedback quite quickly from lecturers, from their uh, fellow students, and also from assessors. This is an example of a professional portfolio um, by Michael Sankey. Uh, he is at the University of Southern Queensland. And before that, we kind of saw portfolios of students. But portfolios aren't restricted to students. Um, professionals like you, and um, other professions can also create portfolios to showcase your skills, um, to use it for employability. So if you want to apply for a different job, you can do that. And um, you can also then just collect all your evidence in one place. So Michael is 
around the internet everywhere. So he uses SoundCloud to make um, content available. He has videos sitting elsewhere and he has text. And so what he can do in the portfolio is really have everything in one place. So he doesn't need to send us multiple links to go to his many different sites online and find his content, but we can go to one place, his portfolio, and then explore the individual areas because we see them directly there. So Mahara also functions as a sort of aggregator um, where we can just have access to all our portfolio all our entire portfolio just in one place and can curate our evidence there. And there are more examples um, that you can access via that URL to take a look at um, what people around the world have been doing with portfolios. Um, and if you know of any other Mahara examples, please do let me know or add them yourself to the list so that we grow our pool of examples. So that was the creation part of the portfolio. You set up your portfolio, you put your evidence in, you reflect on your experiences, and then you can share it with other people. And sharing mean is very important in the portfolio world. Because in contrast to, say, a WordPress blog, you decide with whom you want to share a specific portfolio. Because oftentimes you talk about very personal things in there, about your own experiences teaching. You might be very critical of yourself. And so some people are reluctant to put those things up freely, publicly in the world. And in Mahara, you have the possibility to decide with whom you want to share something. So you can share things just with your friends on the site. You can share something just with one person. So just your assessor or your lecturer um, or just a colleague of yours. You can make it public to everybody around the world or you can just make it public within your institution. So only people who have an account on your Mahara site will be able to see it. Or you can make a portfolio available to just one group of students or one group of colleagues and gain feedback from them. So it is very much up to you with whom you want to share your learning experiences and from whom you also invite feedback and comments. And that is the third part of Mahara, the engagement part, which should not be forgotten because it is a vital part of learning. Um, because what we can do first, of course, is, is give feedback. By giving feedback, we think about the learning experiences of other people, give, feed, give them feedback and help them learn more from their experiences, take in our feedback, see how, what we think about it, and then they can progress from that point. We might give them some tips on what they could improve, or we might also validate their reflections and their experiences and say how well a job they have done and how well their experiences reflect um, what you might also know. So we can give advice, we can give encouragement, and we can also validate them. Second part though is also that you can create a collaborative portfolio, meaning that you can have a group of students working together on a portfolio where they share their evidence, where they create evidence uh, together and then reflect on their experience in the group work or reflect on experiences themselves. Because these days teamwork is quite important in a lot of areas and creating a portfolio together can also enhance that learning experience for them. And lastly, you can also create communities of practice in Mahara because you can form groups and therefore have discussion forums available, can share files, create your portfolios together, and um, use in particular the discussion forums to exchange ideas. So if you have a working group on portfolios, for example, you could use the platform to talk about your ideas, to share examples, um, to share templates, and invite feedback from your colleagues in order to improve that work. And those are the three big components of Mahara. Creating a portfolio, sharing it 
with others, and then also collaborating with people. And all these things can take many different forms. As you saw from the brief examples that I've shown you and from the ones that you can access more, no portfolio looks like the other. So everybody brings in their own ideas, um, uses maybe more multimedia than somebody else, um, might be a bit more creative, uses different font, different font color. Um, that is what a portfolio is about. It is a personal expression of your learning and your experiences. And it can still be used in the academic context for assessment purposes. And you can still require students to have certain aspects in their portfolio and certain elements, but you can still also allow them the freedom to personalize it in order to have it make their own. And therefore, bring in their cultural experiences, their workplace experiences, and um, yeah, have their portfolio that expresses who they are. Now we've kind of looked at a few examples and how Mahara, or how you can work with, um, with Mahara in order to create your portfolio. So now what are the benefits of having an electronic portfolio compared to a paper-based portfolio? Well, there are quite a few. Um, I'm just going to show you 12 benefits. And the first one is accessibility. So portfolios, electronic portfolios are accessible. So you can access them anywhere in the world since they are online. But accessible also for students with disabilities, with handicaps that um, if you have a deaf student or a blind student, they can still work with the portfolio software because um, they, um, if you have videos that have transcripts, then they can read those, or blind students can use it as a screen reader in order to navigate the site. That was not possible with a paper-based portfolio. It is also mobile. You can use it on any device. Mahara is responsive, so you don't even need to install a mobile app. You can install a mobile app, and then you can collect your evidence offline. So in a hospital, in some areas, you might not be allowed to use the internet, um, or if you are in a rural workplace in agriculture, um, you might not, in a very remote island, you might not have access to the internet or only have it very expensive access. And therefore, you can use your mobile device in order to take pictures, take videos, and then already prepare your evidence, write journal entries. And once you're back in the range of Wi-Fi, you can upload everything into your portfolio. So you can really reflect in a timely fashion rather than always having to wait until you're at your computer again or until you're on the internet with your device. It is also shareable, as we've seen, and that is a very important aspect because we often learn in social settings and learn from each other and therefore need to share the portfolio with others in order to get feedback from them. And it is also versatile. So Mahara is not just a software where you create one type of portfolio, but you can create a multitude of them. You can create internship portfolios, you can create a professional development portfolio, you can just create your lifelong learning portfolio, exploring the different stages of learning your talk, how you grew over time, or you can use it for registration purposes, if your area requires registration. Say teacher registration, for example, teachers use portfolios quite extensively and have done so for many, many years um, because oftentimes they need to register. And so they need to show their skills, competencies and the evidence around it. And now with doing that online makes it so much easier for them to collect everything in one place and then make that available to the assessors. Mahara is also learner-centered. So all of you I think no, a learning management system where you are fully in control of what the students can do, what they can upload, when they can upload things, and also pretty much how they can do things. Because if you don't allow them to upload a file, they can't upload a file. Whereas in Mahara, we are taking the other side of the coin. We are looking at, well, what do the students want to do? We go from the students rather than taking the perspective of the teacher first. 
So it is always up to the students of how they want to create their portfolio, what they want to put into it, and also how they want to do that. Of course, if they are creating a portfolio that you need to assess, then they do need to share it with you. But they don't need to share all their portfolios with you. They can have an internship portfolio for one course and then a registration portfolio for another course. And you don't know that the other one exists. exists. It is trackable, um, meaning that you can see what students have done because they provide evidence. And um, you can also see how they have grown over time, therefore making them accountable for their learning. Because they can't just say, I'm really good at um, digging holes in the ground and putting seedlings in. They actually need to provide the evidence. And they need to show what they have been doing. And through the evidence can we then assess their skills. It can also be collaborative, as I've mentioned earlier. Um, you can work together in portfolios, also just collaborative in the sense of um, learning with each other through giving feedback. And feedback does not only have to be given from an instructor, it can also be given by students. Because sometimes you may not have the time to give everybody feedback if you have a lot of students in your classroom. So you can also outsource that in a way to the peers of the students in order for them to engage with each other and learn from each other and give feedback that way rather than you always having to, to give feedback. And it can be social. In the communities of practice, you can engage with people. Even if you live on different islands, you don't always have to come together. It is asynchronous in a lot of ways. Um, so you don't need to be online at the same time to answer questions, but you can leave kind of a message for somebody and then come back and answer it later um, or engage in discussions together. And you can be multimedia. That is one really, really big reason for using an electronic medium for the portfolio and in particular an online one because you have so many possibilities of working with multimedia content. You can either upload videos or audio files directly into Mahara or you can place them on YouTube on Vimeo, on other services, have them in Google Drive, and then simply link them into your portfolio so that you store them in that one place where you always store your media, but still make them available through your portfolio. And that enriches it because through the visual cues in particular, do we really see what people have been doing and how they are doing things. And it can also be integrated with other systems. Currently, we have direct integration points with Moodle. Um, very, there's a very tight integration possible to also have assessments done in Moodle of portfolios that were created in Mahara and of moving content from Moodle to Mahara. Uh, but recently, we also implemented LTI, which is Learning Tools Interoperability. That is a standard that is supported by many learning management systems. Um, and that allows us to also use the account information from the LMS directly to access Mahara, making it easy for the students to move between their systems. And that functionality will be expanded more in order to um, give other LMSs also the possibilities that we currently have via Moodle in terms of assessing portfolios and accessing portfolio content. And last but not least, it is portable. Because at some point, your students might leave your university unless they go from degree to degree to degree to degree. Um, and your university might not allow their students to keep their account forever. So they can take their portfolio with them and put it into another Mahara instance. Or if you have your professional portfolio in your university's Mahara site, but you move, say, from FNU to USP, then you can just take that portfolio, export it, and put it straight into the USP portfolio site, and you're up and running within a few minutes. Don't need to recreate all your content, but still have it right there. So lots of benefits for electronic portfolios to consider when um, looking into portfolio work. 
But that's not all, because portfolios are not just about the software itself. It is really about the pedagogy and how you work with it, how you implement it in your institutions. And that's why it's really important to have the institutional buy-in. So here at USP, um, it's been recognized as being important in certain areas. So Pacific TAFE, for example, has really good support from the yeah, management area. And that helps to give you, as lecturers, also time to explore portfolios, to give the mandate also to the learning technologists to support you in your portfolio endeavors. And to also make funds available to have other staff or servers created, servers available, um, in order to run your portfolio software and support the students as well. And institutional buy-in really helps also to make it clear what the purpose is and how you can also put it into the curriculum. It is, we shouldn't go from the point of saying, well, you've got the software, now let's use it. Um, but you always need to have a purpose. Portfolios can work in many areas, but they may not work in all of them. And it doesn't mean that you suddenly have to have a portfolio in every single course that you're teaching. You might only want to have it in one course. You might only want to have it in an introduction course, or maybe at the end of the year, uh, at the end of the studies to bring everything together, but ask students to collect their evidence over the years. So it really comes down to what you want to do, why you want to have a portfolio, why you're working with a portfolio. Like with any tasks that you ask your students to do and activities, there needs to be a good purpose behind it and also the learning outcomes need to be clear for it. And then, of course, we need to have the stakeholder engagement, meaning that everybody needs to be on the same page. Because if you, if you say, yes, I'm really enthusiastic about using portfolios, but none of your colleagues in your department are, it's really hard to then ask them to use portfolios as well, because they don't see the purpose in it, they don't see the benefits in it. So, Initially, you might be the only person using portfolios in your institution or in your department. And therefore, find people who are like-minded to form your own little community and then get the buy-in from other people in your department when they see how your portfolio system is running, what you can do with it, how well the students accept it. And maybe also you have grassroots movement going, that students say, oh, we are doing this in our portfolio in, in this class. Can we also do that in another? So it doesn't always have to be top down, but it can also be bottom up. And then, of course, especially if you're looking into an assessment portfolio, have the integration into the curriculum. It really helps if it is written into the curriculum, into the syllabus of creating portfolios and why it is necessary so that it's not just an add-on for the students to do as something extra which doesn't really count and nobody really cares about it, but that it is really an essential part. But as I said, it doesn't mean that it needs to be in everything. It can be in selective, in selected courses only. But bring it in so that you can take advantage of learning what your students also do outside of academia, have their skills brought in, and um, see them as rounded humans and individuals. And if you have any questions, we have plenty of time for those, or you're very welcome to contact me later on. So I'm looking forward now to hearing your questions or ideas of what you might want to do with portfolios, um, where you see problems potentially in your department of um, setting up, getting started with portfolios, or if you're interested in looking at some more examples, we can certainly do that as well.